Hello everybody, welcome with Tea with Jean, take two. <laughs> the reason I say that is because last night we were busy with our Yoga Nidra and Tea with Jean session and unfortunately due, due to this crazy time and technology we got cut short. So this is a complete new version of Yoga Nidra for you. I've decided to go completely from the beginning and create one video explaining Yoga Nidra and the importance of Yoga Nidra. I also want to take this time to just thank you so much for your patience and for allowing the, the humanness to be what it is. So thank you for that and here is your Yoga Nidra and session to listen to in your own time. Okay, so with that being said, the reason that we decided to do this Yoga Nidra together is because last week we really delved into sleep and the importance of sleep for, from a variety of different lenses. David Arthur came and joined us, which was incredible, and he really spoke about sleep quite from a scientific perspective and gave, gave some insight to people that were finding sleep very challenging at the moment. I looked at sleep from a psychological, a hypnotherapy, a science of yoga, and a health perspective. And what really came up for me during that session was about providing you with the tools to be able to manage your life effectively and continue doing that. And Yoga Nidra is one of the best tools that I can give you. And um, the reason being is because Yoga Nidra has such incredible benefits. Not only does it help manage, and research has proven this, not only does it help manage anxiety, decrease depression, helps with insomnia and sleep problems, but it also helps with aspects such as chronic fatigue and um, memory and concentration. So this is such an incredible tool that you can utilize every day in your life. And um, what's so magical about it, and when we were speaking last week about sleep, we were speaking very much about the stages that we're in. So beta um, brain waves, we are active, we are, this is where we are when we're active in our everyday life. Then we move to alpha, which is that daydreaming meditation state, okay? Theta, and then delta. Delta is that space that we want to be in for 30 minutes, and it's very much that deep unconscious space. And then REM is when we're quite active, that's our sleep, our heart starts increasing, heart rate starts increasing again. And that's very much about um, being in that active dream dream state, okay? Now, Yoga Nidra helps take us to that space of alpha, of alpha and, um, and theta, okay? Why? Because it's slowly starting to work with the subconscious mind. It helps to take out elements of the subconscious mind, in which I'm going to go deeper in, okay? So let's start, right? So... What is Yoga Nidra and where does it even come from? So Yoga Nidra is part of the Tantras and it is an incredible technique developed by Guru Satchananda Saraswati. It's part of the Satchananda Bihar School of Yoga. And this technique um, is absolutely incredible. And they did, as I mentioned last time, they did a, a research um, study on um, psychosomatic illnesses such as cancer and asthma and um, and what they found is that in when they actually inc included yoga nidra in their treatment plan they found that their anxiety decreased their depression decreased and their overall well-being increased so how incredible is that okay and from that um yoga nidra and and this is such a game changer Okay, half an hour of yoga nidra is equivalent to two hours of sleep. How incredible is that? Now, why? Why is that? Firstly, okay, so hi, Sammy, it's so good to have you here. So I'm starting the take two again. Um, so why is yoga nidra? Why is that? Okay, so the first thing, the first reason that yoga nidra, half an hour of yoga nidra is equivalent to two hours of sleep is because don't you find so much of the time that we would have had a eight full hours of sleep and we wake up and we're still exhausted. And why? Because often we're in REM a lot of the time and our, we are 
overstimulated, we're overthinking and things are just moving and moving and our brain is actually not getting a rest. And in yoga nidra, what it's doing, yoga nidra is taking us, oh, thank you so much, Sammy. And yoga nidra is taking us into a deeper a deeper space. So it's letting us be in that alpha and theta, but it's really helping to relax our mind. Okay. And now, before I go deep into the process of yoga nidra, and I'm so excited to share this gift with you, but let me tell you a little bit about where it fits into the space. Okay. So there um, was an incredible sage called Patanjali, and he talks about the eight limbs of yoga, the eightfold path. And he highlights that um, as, as human beings, we have to fulfill certain areas before we can even go deeper. So he talks about two spaces, Antaranga and Bahiranga. Bahiranga is the outside world. Antaranga is our inner world. So we have to really work and equip ourselves on our outside world before we can even go in our inner world. So these are the steps that Sage potentially highlights. He says the first steps are the yamas and niyamas. Yamas and niyamas are the first two processes. And this is a whole, so many lectures on its own. So I'm not going to go deep into this, but I am going to say that the yamas are very much have to do with social. Okay, what's happening with us socially, right? How we engage with the outside world with aspects such as violence. Okay, how do we become nonviolent within ourselves? Now, um, Niyamas looks at our personal practices within ourselves. So, for example, cleanliness. How do we become um, purified within ourselves? So, he says, right, those are the first two steps that we have to engage in. After that, we look at asanas, which are postures. Why? Because we have to learn about this physical body. We, you know, I'm sure you've experienced this, that when you are in such pain or you've had a knee ache or something trying to sit still or forget about that is so difficult okay and that's what i want to say is our body and our stomach our solar plexus is our second brain and so much of what happens in our solar plexus affects what happens in our mental in our mental state with our brain because the vagus nerve connects our solar plexus to our brain okay so that means that when things are not right in our body our brain feels it and it affects our mental health. So we have to learn how to manage our body effectively. So asanas. We then looking at the fourth stage of pranayama, breathing. Okay, learn to breathe properly. After we breathe, then what happens? After we breathe, we then move to the space of prachahara. Now prachahara is where um, yoga nidra fits in. Okay, so yoga nidra fits in the prachahara space. But isn't this so... I just love us as human beings because how often do we say, oh, okay, I have to go and meditate now. I've never meditated in my life, but I want to go to achieve the inside world. I want to go inside right now and be perfect at it. And I'm going to do it right now. And I'm going to sit still for 20 minutes. I mean, <laughs> like it's just a space where we just set ourselves up for failure so often because we haven't even trained our body. We haven't even trained our mind to go and sit into that space of deep relaxation so now we're saying okay prachahara now prachahara is in between bahiranga and antaranga it's in between the outside world and the inner world and then in the inner world comes concentration learn how to concentrate how do you gaze on a on a candle for so long um <laughs> so true so how can you get candle um gaze at a candle without thinking and without your mind going everywhere? Then we go into dhyana meditation. That's meditation. Then samadhi. It's that really enlightenment kind of space. Okay, but isn't do you notice all of those steps? So yoga nidra fits into prachahara, which is such a gift. So with that being said, prachahara means withdrawing of the senses. So before we can even go into deep relaxation, we have to be able to disengage with our senses because the senses are what we use every single day in our beta wave state to keep active, to go here. This is what our brain is using and our mind to stimulate us all the time. So what Yoga Nidra does, it observes all of those, all of our senses and allows them to let it go so that we can move into a deeper state of relaxation. So isn't that incredible? Now, 
there are eight stages of yoga nidra and for the purposes of today's um, yoga nidra I am not going to go into all eight stages because it is so important to be able to train yourself effectively and I really believe that it would be such a disservice if I took you deeper than what was necessary and what you were trained to do because it's almost like saying right let's go fish for the sharks but you haven't even gone fishing for a little you know you haven't even gone fishing for the little guppies yet and that is what our what our brain is like we have got and out because we've got all of this unconscious material we've got some really big sharks in there okay and we've got some little guppies that we can manage so we don't want to go get the sharks now because we don't we have to learn to manage ourselves first so what are we going to go do we're going to go fish for those guppies and slowly start taking them out and training ourselves to go deeper okay so let me take you through the eight steps and then I'll show you, tell you a bit about the process that we're going to be going through today. So the first step that we're going to be looking at is the step of preparation. Now preparation is the key all the time. Okay, so we need to be able to prepare our bodies. Why are we preparing our bodies? Because we need to say, right, okay, we need to come into a space of Shavasana. Now Shavasana is very much that starfish pose okay so your palms are facing upwards and i'll demonstrate this for you palms are facing upwards relax your fingertips are slightly cold upwards your um hips are moving outwards your feet are relaxed and your body's not touching each other why because you want the energy to flow freely through your body because we're going into that deep relax relaxation space okay so really allowing ourselves to prepare our body and this is also the chance to really start preparing our mind because in yoga nidra the goal is to not move our body we don't want to move the body and why is that because we are trying to disconnect the mind and the body association so for example how often you will you our minds are controlling us all the time and our mind will say do this do that do this do this and you feel like you're not even sometimes in control of your own body and by slowly allowing ourselves to disconnect our body and our mind we are training ourselves to really have more access and connection with our body without being controlled with our minds so you'll notice now when we're going into yoga nidra and we're lying there and we're preparing ourselves the mind one of our deepest teachers will tell us okay no actually you know what my nose is itchy and i want you to scratch here and i want you to do that and before you know it you're just like doing everything and moving all the time and you know what that's okay in the beginning that is what will happen so this is the invitation when your mind says okay you know what even during the yoga nidra practice it says Okay, I need you to scratch my head. Actually, I've got a I've got a sore in my shoulder. You need to move this. Try and see if you can disengage with that. Just observe it as the witness, the drashta. Observe it and let it go. If that is not possible and it comes into that space and it keeps going, don't lie there in agony. That goes against the process. It's okay. Move. Make that adjustment, but know that you're moving. Don't do anything unconsciously. It's all a conscious practice. Okay. Now, the second stage, stage after your preparation is the Sankalpa. Now, this is such a gift and this is so much grace because a Sankalpa is known as a resolution or a resolve. Now, this is an opportunity for us to create a type of affirmation that we would like to achieve. So, for example, if you say, right, I really would like to really work on my health or really work on my weight um, and I want to, and that's something that's really big for you. You first things with the rules with the Zankalpa is it must be in the present tense. It must be in the positive and let it be five or six words. You don't want a whole assignment of something you have to recite. OK, we want to slowly start to disconnect with the mind. So, for example, just say you want to work on your your healthy eating. Okay, instead of saying, um, I don't want to eat food, <laughs> I, don't, I want to stop eating, <laughs> I'm joking, don't do that. Um, so just say you would like to say, um, I would like to work on my healthy, healthy eating. So you would say, I am eating healthy every day. Great, perfect, okay. Um, and so you want to phrase it positive and in the present tense. Now, this is the deal. 
in the beginning, especially as we are beginners in this yoga nidra process, we don't want to go set a massive goal that is going to take us a while to achieve. We want to set quite a short term goal. And the reason being is because it helps us acknowledge the changes very quickly. So for example, if you say to me, right, Jean, um, my goal is that actually um, I would like to go to bed every night at 10 o'clock. I see that I've been going to bed so late at night and it's really affecting my sleep. So my goal is to actually start going to bed at 10 o'clock every night. That is a beautiful yoga nidra um, sankalpa because what it's saying, you could, so you would say I go to sleep at 10 o'clock every night. Perfect. All right, because it's something that you can see very quickly and it's something that you can work on very quickly. Once you've been working on those short term goals, then set yourself for those longer term goals. OK, so yoga nidra and the sankalpa goes a lot deeper, but that is a very kind of manageable bite chunk chunk size now. OK, now the, the third stage we're going into now is the body rotation. Okay, now body, the body rotation is such a traditional and excellent part of yoga nidra and the benefits of this are huge. Now the purpose of the body rotation, and this is where I will say to you, okay, turn your awareness to your right hand, your right hand thumb, your first finger, your second finger, your first, okay, your palm, your arm, your this, and we literally go through every body part and oh my word, does your mind get it so tired of it and that is the purpose. Okay, we want our mind to disconnect from us. Okay, that is the purpose of this stage is we want our mind, our monkey mind to get so bored that it lets go so it disconnects and then we come in and we can access the unconscious because our mind is no longer controlling us. How wonderful is that? And you'll start noticing in the stage you'll be moving into alpha and theta and what happens here? We often fall asleep and that is such a such a common thing okay we often fall asleep in yoga nidra specifically in the beginning and why because it is such a relaxing process as i mentioned earlier we are so frenetic even when we're sleeping there's so much going on that we, sometimes we don't even feel like we've rested but in yoga nidra we go deep and we go quick that firstly you you just go into that relaxation step phase and your mind just disconnects and you go with it and the second space is that you literally just let go and you fall asleep. And that's okay. The goal is that we want to stay aware and awake throughout the practice. So if you notice you doze off, that's fine. Notice that and then bring yourself back if you can or if you wake up a certain amount, that's okay. All right, but the overall goal is to keep aware and awake in the practice. Now, that could be an excellent um, sankalpa where perhaps if you're trying this yoga nidra every night before you're going to bed, say to yourself, um, I stay aware and awake in yoga nidra. Beautiful. Okay, so that's another one. So the body rotation process, the purpose is really to develop that deeper connection with our body and our mind and to disconnect the two. So our mind disassociates and moves away. And not in a psychological way, but just disconnects. Okay. Now, the next stage after that, which is very exciting, we're looking at breath awareness okay this is a chance now when we're moving deeper we're going into that deep space so we're now bringing our awareness to our breath expanding our breath you'll notice what are the um connections with theta okay theta brain waves deep breathing very very slow and that's what we're starting to emulate during this breath awareness phase okay then we're coming into opposites now opposites is all about developing the emotional regulation it's about developing our willpower and it's so incredible because in this phase i'm going to be like imagine you are as light as a feather and you're going to visualize yourself being as light as a feather and then i'm going to say to you okay now imagine you are as heavy as a rock and why is that because now we are doing that and we're really getting our body to feel those different feelings so that when we are in our everyday waking state and we feel so lethargic and we feel tired and we feel exhausted, we can say to ourselves, okay, imagine that I feel as light as a, as a feather and your mind recalls that information and you'll literally move from that deep and sluggish and heavy feeling to that lightness. So this is a very powerful space because it helps to develop that willpower within our bodies. 
Okay, we then move to visualization. Now visualization we're not going to be doing today because visualization is very deep. It will say to us things like, right, um, imagine a sunset. Now you're going to start pulling things out of your unconscious, okay? Imagine a sunset. Then you might bring up a sunset that you remembered when you were five years old. Imagine a moon, sh the moon shining over the ocean. It might bring up another memory. And this is where we're slowly starting to fish all of that material out of our unconscious. Why? Because we want to be conscious beings. We want to act with intention and purpose. A lot of the time, and I'm sure you've heard this very much in the psychology space, is that we run with our unconscious mind. So this technique is such an incredible process to use alongside therapy, to use alongside psychotherapy, hypnotherapy, because it's really helping to pull out those unconscious materials. But for the purpose of where we're at, we're not going to go there because I want to protect you and I want to make sure that you're safe. Okay, we need to do a lot more training before we get to that space. Right, now after that space, we're then moving to our Sankalpa again. We're repeating our Sankalpa as we're slowly coming up three times mentally and then we come into our externalization. Now we don't just pop up and we're happy to go. What do we do? We have to prepare our body again to come out of that deep, relaxation space so we need to slowly start connecting again with our senses we were withdrawing our senses now we connect with our senses okay so that is the the yoga nidra process all right and i'm going to be doing i'm going to be moving you through that now which is so exciting and um, before that as well i'm going to do an incredible technique known as polarization and i have to honor my um, my master Swamiji Kamala video for sharing this technique with us because right now I don't know if you are feeling it so much is going on cosmically obviously with this virus but on higher planes a lot of energy is coming in and out okay and it is it is really challenging so this polarization really helps reset our midline reconnects our balance between the left and right side of ourselves okay so you'll see now for example the right side is the active energy the sun the daytime the left side is the relaxation the calmness the moon the female the evening now that is a bit out of sync at the moment okay we're a bit all over right now so with doing this polarization it's really helping to connect that magnetic field together again all right and when we do this process i'm going to invite you to make sure that your head is facing north okay why because we want to be in line with the magnetic field we want to reconnect that space with us okay and get our meridians flowing all right so we're going to move from a polarization process and then we're going to move into a yoga nidra now let me show you the differences between the polarization and the yoga nidra okay so let me put my teacup over there and let me just stand up i'm going to move this so you can get a feeling okay of what's going to happen okay beautiful okay right so as you see here we're going to now we're going to lie ourselves down make sure you're facing north okay now when we're moving into our polarization, your palms are flat on the floor and your, and your arms are next to your body and your feet are together. Okay, so your feet are together and your palms are next to your body and your eyes are closed. Now, why is that? Because during polarization, we want to make sure that are these we maintaining that energy we need to keep this energy during polarization so that is what's happening during this process okay so we're keeping ourselves close together our palms facing downwards now when we move i will say to you we're now going to move into yoga nidra we then move into shavasan which is the corpse pose then for example you would place your um feet far apart from each other your arms will be placed down on the floor and your palms would be facing upwards okay so you're going to be a complete starfish and your palms are going to be upwards what is, what is that it's it's literally like ask it's asking for grace okay during this process great okay so what i'm going to invite you to do now is start preparing your body okay so i'm going to 
just fix the camera here, just for us and slowly start to prepare your body get ready for yoga nidra as we go deep into the practice of preparing your body for the uh, polarization and then we're going to go into that yoga nidra state so just allowing yourself to connect and move into your process okay right now perfect okay so allow yourself to come into that polarization position bringing your hands right next to your body your palms facing downwards and bring your feet together now as you are lying there i want you to keep your eyes closed throughout this whole practice and if you notice we're going to be working a bit with your monkey mind and that's okay our monkey minds are there to be our teachers if you notice oh your monkey mind jumps there and it's thinking about that that's okay just observe it and then bring it back to my voice all right whatever happens through this process it is such a gift because it's giving you awareness all right so make sure that you're comfortable in your position and now as you are lying there preparing and having prepared your body for polarization now i want you to imagine that there is a magnet on top of your head and i want you to feel that magnet on the crown of your head pulling that energy right from the tips of your toes to the top of your head connecting to the meridians you feel that flow of energy moving so much more through your body. And as you feel this pull of this magnetization, you feel this free flowing of challenges you've experiencing, any feelings of disconnect within your body and allow yourself to imagine that you're feeling that free flow of energy running from the tips of your toes to the top of your head now as you breathe in through your nose always nasal breathing i want you to visualize a silver a gold orange paintbrush painting down your body this orange paint painting this orange paint as you breathe in and as you breathe out, I want you to imagine this paintbrush has dipped into silver paint as it's painting you up as you breathe out. And the breath feels challenging and different. It feels almost like it's going the opposite way. And that is yogic breathing. So as you breathe in, you're moving down and feel that golden sun painting down your body. As you breathe in, I want you to feel that silver moon painting up your body. Right. Breathing in and you move down with that orange. And as you breathe out, you're moving up with the silver. Really coming into that space. Breathing in, feel the whole of your body being painted by this gold and orange. As you breathe out, feel this beautiful silver blue painting up the whole of your body. Breathing in, feel that color moving down. Breathing out, feel that silver coming up. Breathing in, visualizing the sun, really engaging in chromotherapy and deep connection. As you're breathing out, feel that beautiful blue and silver coming up the whole of your body, the moon. Breathing in and breathing out. Move through another few rounds on your own and our body and our mind learns in images and visualizations and 
see if you can really visualize and feel the colors running down your body. Feel your body. And now finish the round that you are on. And now allow yourself to prepare your body in Shavasan, the corpse pose, as we're going to move into yoga nidra. Keep your eyes closed. Perhaps you are getting a blanket, adjusting some clothes, and make sure your palms are facing upwards away from your body. Your legs and your hips are outwards, your feet are moving outwards. And make sure that your back is straight. Make sure your palms are facing upwards. Adjust your clothes if you need to. Make sure your eyes maintain closed throughout the whole yoga nidra practice. And try maintaining a level of spontaneity throughout the whole yoga practice. And if you zone out, that's okay. Just bring your awareness back. Now, allow your movements to stop. And bring yourself into a space of stillness and calmness. Remember during this time, you remain aware and awake during yoga nidra practice. Say to yourself mentally, I am aware and awake through yoga nidra. I am aware and awake through yoga nidra. I am aware and awake through yoga nidra. Now, Bring your awareness to your navel, your solar plexus. As you breathe in, feel your navel rising up. And as you breathe out, allow your navel to drop. Allow it to be effortless and spontaneous breathing through your nose at all times. Observe your breath merging with the rhythms of your breath. Now, allow yourself to start listening to the sounds around you. Be a witness to the sounds. No need to judge or determine what that sound is, but just observe. Perhaps you're listening to a bird or at nighttime there might be crickets and just jump your awareness from sound to sound. Be aware of the external sounds. Now, leave the awareness of the sound and let go. Bring your awareness now to a sankalpa, a resolve or resolution phrased in the present and the positive. And if you are finding it challenging to find the Sankalpa for this session, that's okay. Perhaps your Sankalpa is, I remain aware and awake through Yoga Nidra. Excellent. Now, mentally repeat your Sankalpa to yourself three times with feeling and devotion this is important for you to really reach that, and you will. Feel that Sankalpa sinking into the whole of your body, into your mind. And now we are going to connect to the rotation of our body parts and our different parts of our body. First, we want to look at the meeting parts between the body, your body, and the floor. As I call these meeting points out, visualize the action. If I call out your first finger or 
your buttock. Visualize that. See it. This is a great technique to help you remain aware and awake. Now, be aware starting with your feet. Feel the meeting points of the feet, the calves, your buttock, your lower back, the back of your hands, your elbows, shoulders and the back of your head. Your body is totally relaxed and supported by the floor. Allow yourself to let go through these meeting points and feel yourself moving deeper and deeper into relaxation. Let go. Now we are going to rotate around the body parts to bring you into a deeper state of awareness, a deeper state of relaxation. You will feel all the tensions in your body melt away through the floor as if they're moving and melting through the floor. Let go as you go deeper into relaxation. Every day, you will feel yourself managing your emotions and reactions so much better. In fact, you will be in a complete state of presence. You will feel so much more connected to your body and your emotions. And now, bring your awareness to the right hand. The right hand thumb, the first finger, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, all four fingers and thumb, your palm of your hand, your back of your hand, your wrist, your forearm, your right elbow, your upper arm, your shoulder, your right armpit, the right side of your body, the right side of your chest, your waist, hip, thigh, knee, your right shin, your right calf muscle, your ankle, your heel, the sole of your foot, the top of the foot, the big toe, the second toe, the third toe, the fourth toe, the fifth toe, all five toes, the whole right side of your body the whole right side of your body. You are aware and awake. Check with yourself that you are awake and alert. Now come to the left side of your body. Bring your awareness to your left hand, your left hand thumb, first finger, second finger, third finger, fourth finger, all four fingers and thumb your palm of your hand, your back of your hand, your left wrist, your forearm, your right elbow, your upper arm, your shoulder, your armpit, the left side of your body, the left side of your chest, your waist, hip, thigh, your left knee, your shin, your calf muscle, your ankle, your heel, the sole of your foot, the top of your foot, the big toe, the second toe, the third toe, the fourth toe, all five toes, the whole left side of your body, the whole left side of your body. Now, bring your awareness to your back the right buttock, the left buttock, the tailbone, the small of the back, the middle of the back, the right shoulder blade, the left shoulder blade, the back of your neck, the whole spine, the whole spine and the back of your head, the top of your head and the whole head, 
the whole back of your body. Feel the whole back of your body melting into a cloud, supported and surrounded by the divine light. Now allow yourself to move to the front, the forehead, the right temple, the left temple, your right eyebrow, your left eyebrow, your eyebrow center, your right eye, your left eye, your right ear, your left ear, your right cheek, your left cheek, your right nostril, your left nostril, the nose tip, the whole nose, the upper lip, the lower lip, the tongue, the chin, the throat, the right collarbone, the left collarbone, your throat pit, the right chest, the left chest, the whole chest area, the upper abdomen, navel, and lower abdomen, the whole abdominal area, the whole front of your body, the whole front of your body. Now, feel that whole body as we move through the major body parts. The whole right leg, feel that just sinking deeper and deeper into the floor. The whole left leg, feel that sinking and relaxing deeper into the floor. Both legs together, surrendering. The whole right arm, the whole left arm, both arms together. Feel the whole body completely connected to the whole body. You are aware, you are awake, and you are relaxed. Let go. Moving now and connecting deeper and deeper to our breath as we move into breath awareness. Now, move your awareness and allow yourself to observe your breathing. Allow yourself to feel your breath, your ingoing breath, and your outgoing breath. Allow yourself to maintain awareness and your breath for some time. Effortless and spontaneous breathing. No need to change your breathing at all. Just observing as the drashta, as the witness, training our mind. Alert with the rhythm of the breath. We are going to now Count the breath backwards from 11 to 1 and you will continue as such until you reach 1. Let me help you. Breathe in for 11 and breathe out for 11. Breathe in for 10 and breathe out for 10. Breathe in for 9. Breathe out for nine. Breathe in for eight. Breathe out for eight. Now continue on your own until you reach one. If you drift away or if you disconnect that's okay bring yourself back and start from 11 again otherwise meet all the way at one stop counting now and feel the whole body lying on the floor Adapt, adjust, and accommodate. You follow the breath and the mental account. Awareness of the natural breathing now. Awareness of the abdomen. Awareness of the counting. And now allow yourself 
to let go of that counting and just observing your breath in its natural state in and out of your nose. Now, we are going to move deeper and deeper into opposite, connecting to our body. Awareness of the whole body in the absolute stillness. Now feel a type of heaviness in the body. Imagine there is a heaviness in the whole body. Become aware of this heaviness feeling in each part of your body as you feel your feet become heavy as if it's like cement, cementing itself to the ground, heavy feet. The heaviness in your toes and your soles of your feet, both ankles, your calf muscles, your knees, your buttocks, your, your hips, your shoulders, your solar plexus, you feel this heaviness running from the tips of your toes to the top of your head. And it feels as if the whole of the body is pinned down to the ground. Your eyelids are heavy, your eyes are heavy, the whole body is heavy, heavy as a rock. Experience the sensation of heaviness. The whole body is heavy as it sinks into the ground. And imagine you try to move your body and you just feel the sense of heaviness. And now disconnect, let go, let go of that heaviness and return to a different sensation now. Let go of that experience of heaviness and manifest a light, a lightness in your body. Bring the experience of lightness into the body and start from the bottom. Feel that your legs are loose, the heaviness is gone and this lightness, it's as if you are almost floating on a cloud. You feel that light sensation. The whole body is as light as a feather. Become aware of the body as contact with the floor and feel as if you are floating on a cloud. From the tips of your toes to the top of your head, you are this light feather, relaxed and calm. Feel that experience. You are surrounded by the divine light, protected by the divine light, supported by the divine light, and sustained by the divine light. Now, let go of that feeling of lightness in your body and just return back to your natural state. Acclimatize back, allow yourself to be back into the space. And mentally now, Recall your sankalpa, your resolve, your resolution. And mentally repeat that resolution to yourself three times. You are repeating the sankalpa in a deeper state. Remember, it's in the present, the positive, and five or six words. Mentally repeat your sankalpa as you feel those words moving deeper and deeper into the whole of your body, mind, emotions. Now, allowing ourselves to externalize. Bring your awareness now back to the room that you are in, whether you are lying on a bed or on a carpet. Bring your awareness to the space. And now bring your awareness to the sounds around you. Perhaps there are a lot of sounds around you minimal sounds around you and just slowly start to engage your senses again with the sense of hearing. We are now bringing our senses outwards. Back to the outside world. We had a brief engagement with our inner world and now 
we are withdrawing and coming into the outside world. Start connecting back to the sense of hearing. Allow yourself to connect completely to the sounds around you. And bring your awareness now to your breath. Feel the breathing in and the breathing out. Slowly with your eyes closed, start to stretch your body. Connect to your fingers and toes. You can slowly start to feel your body. Stretch your arms above your head. Stretch your feet out. Moving your fingers and toes. You're bringing that connection and energy back to every part of your body. Keep your eyes closed. And allow yourself to just feel the whole of your body and notice how still and quiet you have become within yourself. You are being body conscious here as you are connecting and observing your body for a few moments. And now allow yourself to slowly start opening your eyes as you're coming back into the space after the practice. And just, you can roll your head from side to side, very gently your neck, just bringing energy back after polarizing, bringing yourself back. And then just allow yourself to move on your side, like a fetal position. If it's the daytime, bring yourself to the right side of the room. If it's the evening, bring yourself to the left side of the room, connecting with Ida and Pingala, the left and right side of our body to balance ourselves. And then slowly start to come up, bring yourself into the seated posture. And we're going to just rub our palms together. And you're going to bring heat into your palms and you're going to place your heated palms over your closed eyes. And this just helps to bring energy back into the aqueous humor. And notice for yourself when you bring those palms over those closed eyes, if there is any shapes, colors, that's just stuff coming out from your unconscious. And if it's black, that's also perfect. Just allow yourself to observe. Okay. So thank you. That was such a gift to share with you that yoga nidra and I hope and the invitation is to really just allow yourself to move through this yoga nidra every day this week until we meet again move through a yoga nidra day and observe for yourself okay what is different what am I noticing that has changed what am I noticing that is different with myself we spoke about last week that it's all about rituals creating a space of really getting our sleep back, creating a lifestyle with our sleep. So allow yourself to immerse yourself into this scientific technique, okay? And notice for yourself, wow, I'm noticing I'm managing my emotions. I'm not so frenetic. I'm not so um, consumed with what's happening with the news. I'm more relaxed. Observe what goes on for you and please share those insights with me. Let me know. And I am here to support you. Send me messages. Let me know how I can connect with you. And um, if there's any questions, please let me know. But for now, we are going to uh, leave it here. And um, oh, thank you so much, Sammy, for sharing. And thank you. Thank you for your words. And thank you all for joining me on this incredible gift of yoga nidra okay i look forward to being in touch and please let me know what you would like to really go into for our next um, live facebook tea with jean um tatwadashi and a lot of people really spoke about we need to speak about depression so that's where we're going to go next if you have any requests or areas that you want to explore let me know i'm here to support you and we are going to get through this crazy teaching time together okay thank you everyone i hope you've enjoyed your tea with jean and um upwards and onwards okay bye everyone <laughs>